All right, still a straightforward problem. Okay, as long as they don't put any number here in front, it really should be easy. All right, x squared is x times x, 32. All right, first thing that pops into my head is 4 times 8. Okay, um, also that would be 2 times 16, 1 times 32. Uh, I don't think I'm leaving anything out. I think that's it. Okay, um, and uh, really the first one I said is the one. Because there's no leading coefficient other than one, um, I can immediately look for the middle term among these. And eight minus four is four, so this is looking good. So here I go, four times eight. Inner plus outer equals middle. Inner, I have four x. Outer, I have eight x. I need the middle to be negative four. So that means the signs, uh, if I want a negative four, I need this to be positive and I need this to be negative. Together that makes negative four x. So positive four x you say, there's, there's your positive four. Negative eight x you say, well there's your negative eight. Does that make negative 32? Mm, yes sir. Positive times a negative is a negative. Okay, so that means this is the answer for number nine. Yay, finally a more challenging problem. Well, wait a minute. I think it's only going to be one extra step. Okay, so not so challenging. Um, let's not forget the first step of factoring. That's right, look for the GCF. Does this problem have a GCF? Yes, sir. All of these are divisible by three. So let's pull out that common factor of three and see what we've got. Okay, if I do that, and then remember, that means I'm dividing everything by three. So that's gonna leave x squared minus eight x plus 12. Now, last time we had a problem like this, um, the remaining trinomial was not factorable. Um, remember, let's see, is there, yeah, we got to this step and we couldn't go any further. But we, we had to try. We should, you should always try to factor a quadratic trinomial. Um, and once again, we're faced with a quadratic trinomial. Let's see if we'll have any better luck this time. Um, okay, 12 is either going to be 3 times 4 or 2 times 6 or 1 times 12. Okay, because the leading coefficient is one, um, I should be able to look immediately for the eight amongst these factors. And uh, look, I, I'm liking the two and the six, because uh, two plus six is eight. So let's, let's run with that. Okay, so I'm gonna try to factor this trinomial. And uh, do not forget your GCF, just bring that down x squared is x times x. All right, 12, we decided to go with the two times six. All right, that means inner, I've got two x. Outer, I have six x. I'm trying to get a middle of negative eight x. Okay, negative eight. Um, to get negative eight, I'll need both of these to be negative. Okay, that means both of these would be negative. Now, is that gonna give me a positive 12? Mm, yes, sir. Negative two times negative six is positive 12. So that means this is the correct answer for number 10. Please do not leave your answer at the previous step. You must, must, must factor this. Okay, number 11. All right, we're finally getting away from the super simple problems. Um, Look for the GCF, there is no GCF. So we will go ahead and proceed to our binomial times a binomial analysis. Now 2x squared can only be 2x times x. Okay, um, then now we look at the, uh, the five. Well five can only be one times five. Now it matters whether I do one times five or if I do five times one. Okay, um, 
this is the way that's going to work, but just to make a point, let me put it the other way. Let's say if you tried it this way. Inner, I have 5x. Outer, I have 2x. This needs to make a middle of positive 11. I can only make 7, so that's why I'm saying it doesn't work. But then we try it the other way. 1 and 5. Now, inner, I have 1x. Outer, I have 10x. This will make 11 if I have positive 1 and positive 10. That means these would be positive. Will that give me a positive 5? Yes, it will. Positive 1 times positive 5 is positive 5. That makes this the answer to number 11. Okay, be careful with number 12. Don't forget the first step of factoring. You might be tempted, you might recognize that this is the difference of two squares. But if you immediately went 2x plus 8 times 2x minus 8, this is not the right answer. Okay? And you should know that because we have common factors inside the parentheses, and that should never happen. All right? That, the reason why is because we need to pull out the GCF. Now, the common factor here is 4. So let's pull that out. Once we know that the GCF is 4, divide. So this is going to leave x squared minus 64 okay, uh, yeah, divided by 4. That's why I'm here. And that is 16. So I've got x squared minus 16. Now, sometimes I have to stop here. The last time I pulled out a GCF, I had to keep going and factor further. Um, will this factor any further? Uh, yes, it will. This is the difference of two squares. So I must continue and factor this further as uh, x plus 4 times x minus 4. Number 13, this one has a common factor, so please recognize it. Um, the GCF is 2. So if we pull out that 2, okay, that's going to leave behind 2x squared minus 5x plus 3. Again, I'm simply dividing everything by the GCF. Now, we need to see if we can factor this further. So I'm going to keep the 2 for now, but I'm going to go ahead and uh, binomial times a binomial. 2x squared can only be 2x times x. 3. Well, 3 is only 1 times 3. Um, but if this doesn't work out, I'll try it the other way around, like 3 and 1. Anyway, inner, I have 1x. Outer, I have 6x. I'm trying to get a middle of negative 5x. So this is looking promising. To make negative 5, I would need a positive 1 and a negative 6. So there's my positive 1, and this would make negative 6. OK, uh, now i got to check one last thing, though. Will that give me positive 3? Does positive 1 times negative 3 equal positive 3? No. Um, this would equal negative 3. So even though I got the correct middle, it's still the wrong answer. So um, let's erase that part and try it the other way around. Let's try 3 here and 1 here. Now, inner, I have 3x. Outer, I have 2x. All right, I'm trying to make negative 5. I can get negative 5 if both of these are negative. Now, if they're both negative, a negative times negative is a positive, so it does give me the positive 3. All right, so this will be the answer for number 13. All right, number 14 also has a GCF. All of these are divisible by 6. All right, 6 is the greatest common factor. 
Um, they are also divisible by three. They're also divisible by two. But you have to use the six because that's the greatest common factor. So that's going to leave behind x squared minus 3x minus 8. Okay, so I keep the 6 and I try to factor the trinomial. x squared can only be x times x. 8. 8 could be 2 times 4 or 1 times 8. Um, let's see. Uh-oh, this is going to be unfactorable. All right, now that I pulled out the 6, there's no GCF. I'm sorry, there's no uh, leading coefficient. So I should be able to look for this 3 right now. 2 and 4 don't make 3. 1 and 8 don't make 3. Okay, so let me just double check and make sure I factored it right. Nope, I did it right. I can't factor any further. So this is the answer for number 14. All right, just all we could do is pull out the GCF. But we had to try. We would not have known until we tried to do um, uh, factor the 8. Okay, number 15. 7 is prime, so that means no GCF this time. Um, okay, we've got big numbers here. So buckle in, people. This could be a bumpy ride. Okay, here's why I say that. The, um, the 12 in the front here. This could be... Um, it could be 3x times 4x, okay? Or it could be 2 times 6, or it could be 1 times 12. Same thing with this 12 over here. It could be 3 times 4, 2 times 6, or 1 times 12. So we have many different combos to deal with. I always start with the smaller numbers first and work my way down, okay? So I'm going to start with 3x and 4x. Okay, this problem is a challenge. I like it. Um, so I'm going to start with that. Let me highlight it so we know where we are. I'm also going to start with that over here. Okay, now as I go to put my 3 and my 4 in, I know not to put my 3 here because that would create a common factor. If the original problem did not have a common factor, there should be no common factors inside the parentheses either. So we'll save a little time there and go straight to the 4 times 3 option. Now, inner plus outer equals middle. Inner, I have 16x. Outer, I have 9x. Okay, um, I'm trying to get 7x. Now, we know that 16 minus 9 is 7. So this is looking very promising, okay, because 16 minus 9 is 7. So I just need this to be a positive 16 and a minus 9, and that will give me 7x. So the 16 comes from having a positive 4 here, 4 times 4, and the negative 9 will happen if I make the 3 negative, okay, negative 3 times 3. Now, one last thing. Am I getting the correct sign on this constant? Am I getting negative 12? Yes. Neg uh, positive times a negative is a negative. So uh, we got lucky because the very first thing we tried turned out to be the answer. I would always recommend starting with the small numbers, like 3 and 4, and then working my way up to 6 and 12. Uh, because it's very common that the smaller numbers work. Okay, 19 is prime, so no GCF. All right, so this is the real deal. Looking at the 6, okay, it's either 2 times 3 or 1 times 6. Looking at the 15, it's either 3 times 5 or 1 times 15. So I have to play with all four of these possibilities. Now, I always start with the smaller numbers first, so I'm going to start with these two. All right, last time, the first thing I tried worked, so maybe I'll get lucky again. So if I go with the 2 and 3, so I'm talking about um, splitting up the 6. So 6x squared could be uh, factored as 2x times 3x. All right, that's what I'm saying here. 
Now I gotta do the three times five. Now I know not to put the three here because that would make a GCF. So I'm gonna put the three here and then my five. Okay, the inner plus the outer has to equal the middle. Inner, I have nine x, because three times three is nine. Outer, I have 10 x. Now I'm trying to get negative 19. Can I get a negative 19? Can a brother get a negative 19? Yes, sir. If both of these are negative, that's going to make negative 19. That means both of these would be negative. Now, am I getting positive 15? Yes, I am. A negative times a negative is a positive. So this is, in fact, the answer to number 16.